Should we do a critique? Yeah, yeah look what I found. <laughs> All right. So, what are we looking at here? How do we feel about this one? The more I like The more you what? Like it. You like it, yeah. I think I think it's a very strong painting. Yeah. All three of these over here are very strong. So what is what is it that we like about these paintings? What's going on over here? It's funny that the three of you oh the three of you are sitting here too. Look at that. <laughs> the energy is a movement. The energy and the movement? Yeah. How about the, the sense of composition? How is that working over here? Yeah. It surprises me that dark people really have This in here? Yeah. It does, right? And does it, do you feel that it creates a hole inside the. Uh, does this kind of look like a bit, bit of a hole? I can put my hand through it, like a boy? Kind of up here, too? No. No? So, I think it, it fills an important need in the It does. So the reason that why this works, remember, is because we have repetition. It comes across over here again, and then it comes across over here. So there's a triangular formation that plays itself. You see that? And so had this not been anywhere else, or this was so here, would be questioned. Like, what exactly is the shape, right? So in the context of all of it, it really works. It also helps to support the background for the foreground to pop to come forward. And you can see that putting some darkness around some of the lighter areas. Keep that in mind when you're painting your work. That adds, that contrast helps it to pop out. Okay. So so we look for that's the, those are kind of like key areas that sort of make the painting dance and we could go all around. Could, could it be broken with just a little bit of this light blue right yep. here, just a little yep, bit? Yeah, definitely. That's how I was gonna get to that. So we can definitely break it so that when we introduce some of this light blue in certain areas, and thank you for pointing that out, then we start to get more of a round form. Because right now it's a little flat. And then as soon as you introduce some of that light, and you know this, I mean from working with color with David, he's probably showing you form and volume quite a bit. So you introduce that, you never let go of that, you just apply it in a way that is contemporary with your brush stroke, where you're a little bit looser with it. You don't have to be so tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does everybody see that? Mm -hmm. I like the yeah. bottom mark making on the bottom of the base. This? No, no, this? no, the bottom of the base. The yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. 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 The, uh, <laughs> The illusion of looking down slightly with a vase the way it is, um, I, I think that's really good. It gives it a sense of depth. Right, it does. It does. Very good. So, and the other thing that I enjoy about it, and um, all three of these have that, is um, in painting we tend to have a tendency to just kind of drop the brush this way, especially when we're doing stems, right? So, kind of go almost like an afterthought. In here, you really feel the weight of the stem. Like it really touches the bottom, you see? Mm -hmm. So you really feel that they're within the, right, within the, the uh, box. And the same thing going on over here, you really can see that, you know, the stem is within the box. That's, that's important because it has a sense of realism uh, without it being overly rendered. But it gives it a place. It gives it a place and, and it solidifies the story that it's telling, okay? So rather than, and, and whatever it is that I say here, Think about your work and apply it to your work as I'm, I'm talking about it. Ask yourself that question. Do I do that? Is that in my painting? And, you know, am I you know, guilty of that? So sometimes we'll drag the brush and we'll just kind of like go, and this is the movement, right? We'll go like this. See that? I see they did this. And I've seen some of you go like this. All right? So that starts to reflect itself in the painting. And I've said, Basically, what you do, and I'll show it here, is you connect, connect, you drag, and you lift. Connect, you drag, you lift. You're gonna get it the first time. Connect, drag, lift. But if I go in and do this, right here, you're gonna get these little hairs from the brush that are gonna start to appear, and that's gonna look sloppy. All right, so you wanna be very inter intentional and determined with your brushwork. So you're always connecting, drag, and you lift. If you see, and you can see it all over here. This is what gives the, the painting a really nice quality. You see it in here also. And then in this one over here, we start to get a much more bold gestural form. You can really see how uh, uh, Beth, Beth, yeah, she's been very determined about where she was placing it. There was a bit, a bit of resistance over here because we were transitioning. How she was transitioning from uh, her 
mind was going from one, one area to the other. Have you all seen that? Mm -hmm. Okay, and there was a bit of a struggle. The struggle was between you and I, you didn't want to put the, uh, the boss. Damn boss. Damn boss. <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't the only one. <laughs> My girlfriend told me, give him my number. I'll, I'll tell him how obstinate you are. <laughs> so the reason I was the reason I wanted the vase in there is because there was a purpose for that. It's because oh, otherwise, it's yeah, these these guys would just be floating around like just perpetually spinning, right? So I, I wanted to grab it. Now, does it have to be realistic? No, I always said, you know, just a form that is just a shape. It's just a shape, just a shape holding these three forms together. It's still sort of spinning. I don't think you're completely done with it. No, 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 no. So. <laughs> it has a strong modern yeah. It does, right? There you go. So it's like, if you look at paintings from Franz Klein, like these big brush strokes, here you are, right here, yeah. look. You see? Yeah. There you are. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that's beautiful. It's, it speaks. It has its own narrative. And then we get into, into areas such as here, where we start to see the, the, the leaves start to shape, and take shape. This is this is composition. Look at that. Mm -hmm. look, at, look at these marks you put here, just to direct our eye right here. And then, of course, we have this gigantic, I'll call it a wheel, all right, for now. It's a Gerbera. For now. All right. And then it takes us back up here. But look, boom, 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 boom. Back in again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, composition is strong. Some of the rendering is not as strong right now. But what holds it together and holds the interest, this is the point that I was making since, uh, since when we started mm -hmm. Friday. If the composition is strong, it will hold your interest. And this is what's going on right now. Can okay. you show me where the rendering needs help? The yeah. rendering needs help in the size of this. Uh, we can darken maybe over at the center over here. Maybe give it a little more volume by darkening slightly over here. But what I do like is, first of all, the size is too large. I would bring it down a little bit because it's really dominating a lot. And maybe you can do that by putting some other flowers around here. On top of it? On top of it, or maybe some leaves on top of it. Yeah. So, um, don't get caught up with it's a flower and nothing can go on top of the flower. Most often, you have a flower in the bouquet and you have another flower in the front and it could be displaced this way. Okay? So we're, we're not just on this platform. Now we're, we're doing foreground, background, and then even further out. So they, they won't have to be as big as this, and um, you can definitely cut into it. You can actually remove quite a bit of it. You can. I mean, acrylics will let you do that. And then start bringing in some darker greens. These greens can be a little darker, okay? So it's going to take attention away from there. Maybe one of this yellow leaf can go on top over here too, on an angle. So it's on top, and it's bringing us right here, and then it's carrying us over here. A uh, rule not to ever, ever do, this is whatever, never make this line and this line touch like this, because now we're, we don't know where we stand. You either make this dominate or you make this dominate on top. Okay? So that's another thing that you can do with that. Suddenly we have this beautiful blue flower and we get, where did that come from? So it's like way off. Didn't she repeat it from the floor right next to it? Those letter strokes? I don't ask you where did that come from? What was, what was the reason for that? I like the two of them together, but... Do they, do they, do they connect? Because then... No, the, 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 the blue and the pink together. Right, so um, I would probably take this and blend it in just a little bit more. Maybe come into another blue, or you can more another pink, a lighter pink. Because these pinks are really nice with the purple, it works really well. This is David's purple, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it works. But I haven't had that, that one. Yeah, and, and it works. I mean, this is a really beautiful color scheme. I like how you put the yellow here, you want to get the yellow here. So all of this, we saw it in the end of scene here. But do you see how quickly she jumped from that? Yeah. From this to that? Mm -hmm. Like, so then she went right up to here, and now look at this, right? Everything I'm talking about, about color harmony and harmonizing. Yeah. She just went like boom boom. Like it's there was a sudden like there was an understanding, there was a moment of awakening here where I'm like, oh wait a second, I did that here. I can take I can do it here. I can repeat some of these in here, take the red and put it here. Take the yellow and put it here. Do you see how she repeated herself? Yeah. Okay. That's that's the movement. That's the growth. Like where do I go next? 
you repeat some of the stuff you already know and you push the envelope a little further. Okay? So, you see that? So, now what we have, this got complicated, your mind went immediately to, I'm going to keep it complicated, but I'm going to simplify with the background. So now you give it a space, lots of space for this to breathe. Here we don't have that space. This is sort of similar to the composition that we did, I did on the first day. So good, good try, we went with that, we simplified it, and then I said, if you were to cut this now, let's see we cut this, right? Okay, wow. you see that? Mm -hmm. Now we're here. Yeah. Which one did she do first? So you see that? So in your yeah. process, okay, you've done five of these, let's say. You've done five of these. Your sixth one would be like, you look at everything you've done, and you're like, I'm ready to get rid of that boss. I can take the boss out now, right? So now you're, now you're in this zone. Okay, let's, let's go with that. You see that? All right, yeah, exactly that. If you look at that. Or take, take a photograph when you uh, mm -hmm. your iPhone, mm -hmm. crop it, crop it, you'll see it immediately. Right? So good, like, I mean, really good jump. Yeah, Anybody want to?